We'll take a little time to look at negative and rational exponents. A uh, little note about vocabulary, since vocabulary is, is pretty important for understanding. Rational just means something that's made up of ratios. Uh, a ratio being something like 5 to 2. Uh, something maybe 5 students who own uh, dogs to 2 students who own cats being a ratio. Uh, you can see ratios written with a colon in between them as well, but most often you're going to see ratios written as fractions. And so a rational exponent is an exponent that is a fraction. So negative exponents, m to the negative n. Negative exponents signify reciprocal values. And so m to the negative n is the same thing as 1 over m to the positive n. And we want to be comfortable with that jumping back and forth uh, between negative and positive exponent forms. Uh, typically, we'll prioritize representing things as positive exponents, but we're going to find in calculus taking positive exponents and writing them as negative exponents is going to be a very valuable skill for certain calculations. For a rational exponent, it's important that we remember that these represent radicals where the top number is going to be the exponent uh, that's going to be applied to the base, and the bottom number is going to be the index of the radical that we write. Uh, so this can be rewritten as the b root of m to the a power. Now that can also be rewritten as the b root of m all to the a power, and which direction you want to go with that, which one of those you want to use, uh, can be influenced by the problem that you're solving. So you, you're going to want to be flexible and comfortable with both of those represent, representations. There are two ways to think about a fraction being raised to a negative exponent. And one of those is to remember that an exponent can apply both to the numerator and to the nom denominator. And so we could write it like that with the negative exponents. Uh, if we think through how these can be rewritten with positive exponents, the long way is to turn them both into fractions. And then when you divide two fractions, that becomes the multiplication of the reciprocal, m 1 over m to the a times the reciprocal of the denominator. And so this just becomes n to the a over m to the a. It's in, it is useful as a shorthand way that you just get comfortable with moving whatever's in the bottom to the top in order to make its exponent positive and whatever's in the top to the bottom to make its exponent positive. Another way to think about this is if we remember that this negative on the exponent just means reciprocal, then this problem becomes a lot easier because it can just be rewritten as the reciprocal to the a power. Take the negative sign away and apply the reciprocal uh, to that problem. And we hopefully are comfortable enough with our exponent rules to see that those two things are the same. Uh, here are a couple of common mistakes. One common mistake is just very simple. We kind of forget a little bit about negative exponents, and we just say 5 to the negative second power is negative 25. Uh, but this does not mean 5 squared, but negative. Uh, this means the reciprocal of 5 squared, or 1 over 25. And that's a, I don't see that very often, but sometimes it can be uh, a quick thing that students will do when engaging with negative exponents for the first time after a while. The second one, and this is one that I see all the time, and that is taking this expression, 2x to the negative third, and rewriting it as 1 over 2x to the third. You might even be asking yourself, why is that not the answer? I take the negative exponent, I move it to the bottom. And that's because I, I think a lot of times we get locked into this idea that 2x is a single uh, expression, uh, and that the 2 must be attached to the x, and that anything's happening to the x is also happening to the 2. But in this case, that is not true. This expression, 2x to the negative third, can be rewritten with the multiplication sign that is missing. The multiplication sign that's missing is 2 times x to the negative third. And x to the negative third, well, that is equal to 1 over x cubed. 
So the other way to write this problem is 2 times 1 over x cubed, giving us 2 over x cubed. So be very, very, very careful with coefficients when you are working with problems that have negative exponents, of which there will be many. Okay. Uh, another issue is when we run across a negative exponent in a problem that has uh, a fraction and there is addition or subtraction in the top of that fraction. Uh, the, uh, the mistake that is usually made involves taking this and moving it up to the top and then not knowing what to do with it. I see two different things. Sometimes I will see this become x squared plus 2x to the third. So we attach it to the 2 because we want to move it up to the top and just stick it onto the end of the 2. Sometimes the mistake is x squared plus 2 plus x cubed. We move it up to the top, but we decide to include another addition sign, making three terms. Both of these are incorrect. And if we are a little bit more careful with how fractions work, and we think of this problem instead as x squared plus 2 times 1 over x cubed. And if we're really comfortable with fractions, we're comfortable with reading, writing it like this. Uh, sorry, 1 over x to the negative third. Then we see that this can be rewritten as x squared plus 2 times x cubed. And that's closest to this first mistake, but the big problem is the lack of that parentheses. And that parentheses means that this x cubed needs to be distributed through, giving us x to the fifth plus 2x cubed. Okay. Uh, the fourth problem, which is also a mistake that I'll see, uh, is similar to number three, but instead here, we see that the x to the negative second, the negative exponent, is the one that is being added to something else. Uh, the mistake that is often made here is by taking this x to the negative 2 and just moving it to the bottom and calling this 3x over 4x squared, which would simplify to 3 over 4x. Uh, but moving it down to the bottom in that way is not appropriate. The best way to approach this particular problem is to think of this as x to the negative second over 4 plus 3x over 4. And we'll see now we can move that negative exponent down into the bottom, turning this into 1 over 4x squared plus 3x over 4. And now if we wanted to put them back together, we would make sure to get combined uh, like terms uh, by changing the denominator of this second fraction to 4x squared and then put the fractions back together. That would give us 1 plus 3x cubed over 4x squared, multiplying that second fraction by x squared over x squared. Uh, so a couple of mistakes that you want to make sure you can avoid with negative, particularly negative exponents. They're the ones that cause the most problems. Here are eight practice problems. Uh, go ahead and stop the video. Uh, try these eight problems on your own. Make sure you give a good attempt to each of the eight. And then look on the Google site uh, for the answers to make sure that you have solved them correctly. Bring up any questions uh, either with some classmates or with me if you do miss any of these eight problems before moving on to the post-test.